I've already explained that the first touring car race driver with so many events in one, along with select official licenses, was good for its time. But old age meant that it's no longer the racer I liked back in 2002 and isn't worth playing anymore. I was able to get some enjoyment out of the sequel, in fact it improved on almost every element. But the driving mechanics were still touchy, AI drivers showed no mercy, and a story wasn't necessary. This finally leads us to Touring Car Race Driver 3, or V8 Supercars 3, or DTM Race Driver 3. It was released on February 2006 late in the life cycles of the PlayStation 2, Xbox and PC. If the second game has aged better than the first, then theoretically this should be even better. I'm going to set the tone early by saying it's not a theory. Touring Car Race Driver 3 is better than the other two, but why? Okay pal, so what's next? first thing that happens after you create your profile is that you put in a race car and taught how to drive by Rick. This is what you're aiming for. The perfect racing light. And this is you. Uh, no? This is how I actually went around that corner. I came first by the way, and this was his reaction. Okay, so that wasn't the best drive I've ever clapped ties on. You did alright. Quite a response after overtaking almost every car in half a lap. There should be different cutscenes at the beginning depending on how you went. The goal is to win race championships, beat specific rivals and climb up the career ladder, just like the predecessors. There will always be 2 or 3 events to choose from with 32 tiers to climb, and again, they're short, giving the mode more variety and stopping you from skipping any races. And this smarter racing is seen as moving up the professional race driver's ladder. With Gran Turismo, it's about how many cars and events they can implement in a game, and how each car handles, particularly in later titles. It's basically a love letter to cars. With Touring Car Race Driver, it's more of a love letter to motorsport. It's hard to explain because it's a good simulation racing series, but for completely different reasons to Gran Turismo. Like, can you name another racing game that has sprint cars, monster trucks, V8 supercars, and Formula 1s? That's one thing I can give the developers credit for in the predecessors. The story gave you a feeling of starting small and reaching the top. You kind of get it here, but Rick is the only main character, and all he does is describe a car, how to drive it, and how he feels after a race. My granny can drive quicker than that. Not to mention, the first time you're on the track is in the DTM. I'm not going to pronounce the full name because I have a pitiful history with pronunciations. What was I thinking? This is fine because it's a racy game, and I didn't care for any of the characters in the first two race driver titles anyway. The full motion video quality is also better. Too slow, and you'll fail to get enough lift to clear the jump. Too fast means you're going to overshoot. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that whenever he explains the consequences of a wrong move, it happens during a race? In the cutscenes, I mean? But you have to be careful not to carry too much speed into the corners, otherwise it will send you into a wall. <laughs> Funny that someone crashed and the race marshals are just standing there. Also, shouldn't I be on the track? If you compare all three games, you can see the evolution of improvement. The PC port in particular, 1080p 60 frames per second, looks fantastic. Like a AAA remaster without texture pop-ins or slowdown. When I said in my review of the first race driver that the PC version would look better, this footage proves it. When you go into other game modes, the event selection is categorized based on car type like oval, classic, off-road and open wheel. There's so much variety. Japanese works, rally, indie cars and even the Mercedes Silver Arrows. Enacting what Spirit of Speed 1937 would have been like if it was good. These are just a few of the 59 events in this game, along with 50 tracks worldwide. For a third time in a row, V8 Supercars and DTM are officially licensed with all the cars and tracks of the 2005 calendar available here. The rest of the events use real race cars but with a few compromises. I mean, there are only so many tracks you can put in one game. Maybe there are more events in the second game than I give it credit for, but it might have to do with the fact that the events in this one are easier to unlock thanks mostly to Pro Career, or simply a mode for gamers who can't be bothered to unlock everything the hard way. You can literally set it to one lap and that would be enough, but unlike the World Tour, you have to go through the entire calendar, but because the difficulty can be reduced, this sort of game mode makes this game more arcade friendly. While the World Tour is the most developed, the Pro Career mode gives you more to do. Before you start a race, you're given tuning options and a summary of the actual event itself. So if you're in pro career, it might as well be a guide to help you figure out how many points you get for a win and calculate how many tracks there are on a calendar, therefore how many races needed to win in order to meet the objective to unlock the next event. 
Okay, I know it sounds like I'm rushing through Pro Career because it can get dull going through so many tracks in one event, and in some ways, yes, that is the case. But as a kid, I would always pick Time Trial or Free Run, select a track, do a couple of laps, and drive on another track. I played racing games like an arcade machine, basically. I always got enjoyment from the driving element. But if you want to race properly, simply change the number of laps at the beginning and increase the difficulty, which unlocks bonus events. Everyone wins. And for the first time, it gives you the option to qualify. It was so frustrating being put in the middle, sometimes all the way back at the grid in the other two games. Here, not only does it give you a chance to earn the pole position you truly deserve, but also practice because you can restart at any time, and I literally mean any time, including the races. So the time and lap limits don't mean anything. Just make sure you don't cut too many corners because this game is very petty when it comes to penalties. It has safety flags, I'll give them that. I just wish those race marshals would penalize the opponents, who are always looking for ways to pit maneuver you, but it only happens if you have an open wheeler because you can also get jigsawed between another car and that they're colliding with a spinning wheel. That's probably the worst thing that can happen because I've played this game with a controller, keyboard and racing wheel, and all I can say is no matter what you're using, despite the occasional understeer woes, it controls way better than the first two games. It's not as detailed as a Gran Turismo title, but it's very easy to comprehend. A good racing wheel is always the way to go. It was a bit of a hassle trying to activate it, but it was worth it. Cars control better than others, they take damage, it can be fixed in the pits as well as making the occasional mandatory refueling. You have a better feeling of speed like in an F1 car for example, at least compared to other F1 related games released in the mid 2000s. And most events have 20 cars on the track at once. Those AI drivers actually recognize you on the track, like if you stop on the middle of the road, they'll slow down and drive around you. Oh, and the yellow flag will be waved. Touring Car Race Driver 3 has more events and tracks, improved racing mechanics, an easier way to unlock everything even if it's a little tedious, and is more casual friendly without necessarily sacrificing the challenges from the predecessor. I played this back when it was new, but today with the technological enhancement of PCs and the addition of a racing wheel, it's even better. You can tell that Codemasters kept trying and it paid off. It's not only the best of the trilogy, but one of the best racing games of the 6th generation, an overlooked gem that I definitely recommend. Touring Car Race Driver 3 was the last of the Touring Car era, until the series went in a new direction focusing on arcade style gameplay which we know as the grid titles. This one proves just how good Codemasters were as developers back then, and Solid Titles Dirt Rally and F1 2016 prove they still have it. Whether or not a new Touring Car title will come out in the 8th generation remains to be seen, but this is Codemasters we're talking about so I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. 